My mother was in the original Cotton Club, I'd say the mid-30s uh, through the mid-40s. And my father, who uh, of course only died when I was nine years old, he was in a singing group called the Charioteers, which was the, the number one uh, a black singing group uh, in the United States. And so there, there was this really the high echelon uh, of people in show business would come over the house. People like Duke Ellington, Count Basie, Joe Lewis, the heavyweight champion of the world, Billy Holiday, Lena Horne. And I just thought these were uh, just normal people. But looking back, I said, oh my God. <laughs> but I was so young, it all went over my head. At that time, I lived in the, in the Bronx with, and my mother and auntie, after my father died, they lit, stayed down in Harlem at this big famous place called the Teresa Hotel. So my, my mother took me down and I heard Louis Armstrong play it. The only thing I thought, I thought, wow, he has such a big, pretty sound, you know. So my mother took me backstage and Louis Armstrong, on his trumpet and mouthpiece, taught me how to make a sound. So I said, I said who's this cat? You know, to my mother, I'm just nine years old. My mother took me back to see Louis Armstrong uh, about a year later, so Louis Armstrong in this voice, you still playing the trumpet? I said, yeah, man, give me a horn, you know, and, and played Flight of the Bumblebee. Diddly, 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 diddly. And I remember, I can just see it like looking in my hand. Louis Armstrong screamed and, and fell on the floor as he got up. He said, man, that's some of the best stuff I ever heard in my life. But here I'm like 10 years old. You know, it, it, didn't, it didn't register <laughs> what a compliment that was. But uh, looking back, it's uh, unbelievable how that day turned into the rest of my life. You know, uh, Hawaii jazz, New York jazz, they're different because I think jazz reflects in each country the conditions and each society at that particular time in history. Uh, of course, you know, uh, compared to when you say jazz in Hawaii and jazz in New York, different lifestyles. So here it's a little, you know, <laughs> more laid back. In New York it's a little more aggressive and, and uh, challenging because that's the lifestyle that people live there, you know. Every time I come here, this is my fourth time I've come here, having the fortune to play at the Hello Pilate and Lures Lounge. I mean, as soon as you get off the plane, I was, I was amazed, it smells like orchids. <laughs> the people are just so genuine and warm. Hello, how are you, you know? Uh, as opposed to New York, excuse me, what's the time? That, what? <laughs> and I always ask uh, my students at the, the Juilliard or Oberlin, you know, one question. I said, well, why do you want to play jazz? Is it for the love of the art form or is it for the possibility of fame or fortune? I mean, not that anybody's against fame or fortune, you know, but if it's only for the fame or fortune, then you're in for an acute psychotic depression, <laughs> you know. But if it's for the love of the art form itself, you'll be in bliss for the rest of your life.